Uh, just some closing thoughts that I had for you uh, that I was just, as I was flying back from Tampa on Wednesday night at about one o'clock in the morning, uh, I just started putting some thoughts together. So uh, your job through this presentation is to determine which thoughts came before midnight and which thoughts came after midnight. So uh, it's going to be kind of an exciting journey for both of us. This is the first time I'll be reviewing these. Uh, vision. Turning your business into money, okay? Proverbs 29, 18, I want you to write it down and remember it. Uh, it is actually on the whiteboard in our conference room, okay? It says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. Now, what this is referring to is if you've got a group of people who have no idea what you want them to do or for what reason you want them to do it, you've got a bunch of people who are worthless to you. So a clearly defined vision statement for you, your business, and all of the people that work with you is so incredibly imperative. We just got done having our, our diamond and platinum lunch, you know, and as I was listening to Regan and some of the others that were sharing, as they were talking about building their power team, you know, your real estate agent, your title company, your, your uh, um, whoever else, your contractors, your handymen, do they know your vision? I mean, do they know the number of properties that you intend to buy this year? Uh, where's Mike and Edie? Are Mike and Edie back in the room? So I was talking to Mike. I had dinner with them last night, and he was telling the story about free dessert. How many of you have been through the free dessert, the free dessert program? Okay. Uh, free dessert basically is when the meal is over uh, and your food has come, uh, and you've eaten, and the server comes over and says, hey, can I get you anything for dessert? And you say, yes, I'll have whatever is on the free dessert menu. And, of course, they look at you like you're nuts. Uh, and then you, through negotiation and communication, have to get them to give you free dessert. So it's kind of a fun, silly, simple game. And if you don't get the cheesecake, you're not out anything, right? But it will position you and strengthen you as a negotiator and a communicator. So Mike starts walking me through how he got it. And this is what he said. He said, look, this is the third night in a row we've come to your restaurant to have dinner. And I can assure you there's going to be more nights that we're going to come here and have dinner. And we are much more likely to come back more frequently if we get free dessert tonight. What was he doing in that statement? He's communicating a future vision to the waitress or the server, you know. Had the server not been told, by giving me this now, you will get more later, I'm pretty confident he would have got the free dessert. So your contractors, as you're negotiating pricing, do they know that this is not the only deal in queue for them? Do they know that your plan is to do 10 a year, 20 a year, 30 a year, 40 a year? Do you know that that's your plan? So it must be effectively communicated because it's powerful when you know how you view your business. So how do you view your business? Because what you see is what you get. I heard a statement. It's a marketing statement the other day. And the statement is this. In business, you don't get the customers you want. You get the customers you attract. Now, that's a whole different statement, isn't it? Uh, what do you get when, with honey? Bees. bees. Do we like bees? Sometimes. If you don't like bees, put out some vinegar, right? And you detract the bees. You get what you attract. So, who's currently in your business? Successful people or moochers? Successful people are moochers. Are you surrounded by people that are pushing you, helping you, encouraging you? Or are you surrounded by people that constantly want time and energy? And, Talk to me. I need you. Needy people? Don't blame them for their behavior because you attracted them. One of my favorite Dr. Phil statements, you train people how to treat you. So if you've got people calling you 29 times a day, you've trained them that that's acceptable behavior. Okay? So you must dictate the rules of engagement to you and people doing business with you. And if you don't like what you're currently getting, it's because you've allowed it up to this point. So you have to change it. So let's change gears here. What is a commodity? A commodity is defined as a basic good used in commerce that is interchangeable with other commodities of the same type. Commodities are most often used as inputs in the production of other goods or services. The quality of a given commodity may differ slightly, but it is essentially uniform across producers. 
When they are traded on an exchange, commodities must also meet specified minimum standards, also known as a basis grade. Any good exchange during commerce, which includes goods traded on a commodity exchange. Now let's break that down. What's a commodity? Give me an example of what a commodity is. Sugar. Sugar. Wheat. Wheat. Coal. Coal. Gold. Oil. Oil. Pork bellies. Fried chicken. chicken. (laughs) Not unless it's Robert Winfield's wrapped in bacon fried chicken. What else? What's another commodity? Corn. Corn. Okay. Now, these are commodities because if I grow corn on my five-acre parcel and you grow corn on your five-acre parcel, whose corn's worth more? Isn't it really the person who can sell more corn more quickly? Because cash in hand, right? So when I am expecting to get this price for corn and the guy across the street is selling it for 10 cents cheaper, who's going to sell their corn? Okay, so the problem with a commodity is you are only as good as the next cheapest competitor. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, a commodity that you did not mention was money. Money is a commodity. Did you know that? Money is a commodity because if you are driving down division here in Spokane and one bank says CD rates are 0.94% per annum with a 36-month CD and another bank says 1.1% for 24 months in a CD, where are you putting your money? (laughs) Now, prior to your arrival here, you would have chosen 1.1 for 24 months. Higher yield, less lockup period. Okay, That's a commodity. Keep that in mind as we move along. Do you view your business like a commodity? If you do, be careful, because commodities are based on price, market fluctuations, Wall Street, foreign wars, political debates, new reports. Remember the fake tweet that sent the markets plunging? Do you guys remember that? It's about 90 days ago. Somebody sent a tweet, and somehow they managed to tweet it out to like uh, 1.6 million people. Uh, actually, what did they do? I think they infiltrated E-Trade's accounts, wasn't it? Something like that. So they sent out this tweet that the market's crashing and everybody sold. And then once Twitter sent out a retweet and said, oh, just kidding, market went back up. Do you really want to be in a business that, that is that volatile? I don't. Okay. Commodities are things, not people. Commodities lose value. Commodities are limited resources. Now, you could argue these six ways to Sunday. Well, oil's not a limited commodity. It's replenishing. It's, it's the salt of the earth. No, we'll run out. Okay, fossil fuels. Uh, commodities lose value. Well, no, no, no. Gold's been going up. No, no, no. Gold's been coming down. Okay, gold will always come down when the stock market goes up because gold is in direct correlation to consumer confidence. So if consumer confidence is low, what's gold? High, because investors always retreat to what's safe. So when consumer confidence is low, they buy gold. When consumer confidence is high, they sell gold. What happens to the price of gold? What happens to the stock market? Goes up, okay? So it's not, uh, what's the quote? Uh, People people are smart, Uh, a person is smart. People are stupid. Have you heard that? Have you guys read uh, The Tipping Point or uh, change, what's the other one from the same author? Tipping Point and, where's Dean? Dean, what's, who's the other author? It's uh, Gladwell. I'm going to his name. Okay. All right. While he's looking at that, we'll continue. Secure Investment Corp. is not a commodity. Okay? And it's really important that you guys understand that because you as affiliates are going to be viewed as a commodities dealer. Now, let me explain. What are you representing as an affiliate of Private Money Exchange, Security Invest Corp, and Kogos? What are you representing? Money, money right? Private money. So what's the first question that everybody's always going to ask you? How much? How much? What are your points? What are your fees? What's the length of your term? And in that moment, they are commoditizing your deliverable. And it kills your business because you can only compete on price. You heard Dean say the other day, we intend to be the Nordstrom's of lending. 
Now, there's a reason he strategically used that terminology. When was the last time you walked into Nordstrom and beat up the cashier for a 12% discount? If you're my wife or one of my kids, you did it last Sunday. But for the, the common person, you don't walk into Nordstrom and start asking for discounts, do you? Because you know that when I buy anything in Nordstrom, if it is subpar in any way, even years later, they'll give you 100% of your money back. That's a service that cannot be matched, which is why in good economies, bad economies, Nordstrom's continues to go up and to the right. For this business to be as big and successful as we know it will be, we need, we need to make very sure that we are all communicating the same message. And that message is, if you're looking for the cheapest price, don't come here. Because we are not looking for the cheapest investors. Because we get what we attract once we know what we want. And here's what I want. I want a large customer base of customers who come to us because the quality, the assurance, the delivery is the best in the business. And you don't squabble over a point or two. You simply pay it because you know you're getting the best value out there. Does that make sense? Now, you're going to take this information and you're now going to communicate it to all of your clients in the field as they're looking for money. So Secured Investment Corp. is not a commodity. It's not another informational product company, not just another hard or private money lender, not lending for quantity alone. We're not looking to imitate the big bank model. Money flow is not based on market performance. It's not a limited source of funds. We provide access to millions of dollars for investors who would otherwise not qualify. And it is not designed to earn you less so we can earn more. Banks lend your money on whatever they want, and they make the 10 to 15% return. You lend your own money through us on whatever deal you want, and you make anywhere from 8 to 15% return. How do you like them apples? Okay? Now, I have heard this statement several times this weekend. Why couldn't I have found you guys first? I've heard that from numerous people this weekend. Many of you who have already invested thousands of dollars in other people's training programs. And it does my heart good that you guys see a significant difference in the deliverables you're getting from other firms that we don't need to mention here. You know who they are, and they know who they are, and us. Do you agree that there is a very distinct difference between them and us? Do you think that that's an accident? No. It was done by design for this very reason. I cannot compete on price. I cannot compete on terms. I cannot compete on points. And I don't want to. Because I'm not looking to lend to the masses. One of the guys in my mastermind refers to them as the masses of sizz. I am looking for the few and the betters. That's who we're looking for. The fewer and the betters. I don't need to lend one dollar to a million people. I need to lend one million dollars to a couple of people. Same dollars and cents, isn't it? Why do we do this? Number one challenge for new businesses is access to capital. Period, point blank, end of statement. 45% of businesses do not even seek financing. 80% of all new businesses fail within the first five years because they are undercapitalized. Yet they own free and clear real estate that they could have leveraged to get the liquidity that they needed to inject into their business to invest in marketing and systems and technology that could have taken their business to the next level. But when they walk into the bank and show their portfolio, The bank sees they're running in the red here. Yeah, you've got some real estate, but if we lend you money on it, you don't have any income to pay it, so you don't qualify. So what happens to their business? Closes. Closes. And some are so disconcerted by the whole thing, they decide, I'm not even going to try. And they just let the whole thing fold up. If they would have known about you, who informed them about us collectively, could we have helped save their business? 
We could have given them, as you learned from Gary this morning, we could have given them 50% cash out on the free and clear real estate that they own. Here's cash. Go do the things you need to do in business to be, to be successful. But they don't do that. 15% didn't need it. 30% needed capital but didn't think they could get approved. And look at the right side of the screen here. 55% of businesses seek financing. 64% of those who applied did not get it. And of those who applied, 82% were denied. Yet, do you have any idea how much dry powder, dry powder is not a Wall Street term, that refers to the amount of unused, undeployed capital sitting in the bank accounts, savings accounts, and self-directed IRA accounts of Americans by themselves? Americans only. What's the number? Undeployed capital that could have been lent, could have been leveraged, could have been used. What's the number? 70 trillion dollars. 70 trillion dollars spread out about 360 million Americans. That's a lot of dough, isn't it? Why is it just... Why is it just sitting there? Why is it just sitting there? Now, before you ask, answer the question, I would ask you this question. How many of you have a savings account? How many of you have a checking account? And how many of you have that money 100% deployed into high-yielding investments 100% of the time? One, good. You've been around a while, haven't you, Michelle? See, we all deal with the issue, but I can tell you that deploying $5,000 is easier than deploying $50,000, and that's easier than deploying $500,000, and that's easier than deploying $50 million. So to deploy capital, you have to have a system through which capital can inject itself into the opportunity. That's what we've built here. That's what we have built here. That's what you guys as affiliates are bringing to us. You're bringing the very containers that we put money in, in the form of people, in the form of projects, in the form of development. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. Is that not empowering for you guys? So how could you not leave here as an evangelist of this stuff? How many businesses will fail this year because they didn't know where to get money? And of those, how many could you have stopped from failing simply by giving them your private money exchange card? Think about that. Despite these challenges, small businesses remain focused on growth. 84% of small business owners use funding for growth capital. Of those, 29% use it for expansion, 16% use it for inventory and equipment purchases, 39% use it for working capital, and they are actively pursuing new customers. Word of mouth, word of mouth marketing is the number one source for new business. Followed by number two, natural sources to their website. And finally, number three, email marketing. Now, this is an interesting slide because many of you have invested thousands of dollars on marketing campaigns, CRM databases, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. You've spent thousands getting people to post there. And it's the third most successful marketing platform in your business. And also, in my opinion, the most difficult. I have a hard time tweeting. Those of you that have been here all weekend, you know it's hard for me to say anything 140, 140 characters or less, right? <laughs> so Twitter's kind of an enemy of mine, but it's number three. Number two, natural searches by their website. You want to know how you get natural searches by your website? You provide valuable content, and you provide a service to people who need that content. Now, you can manufacture results, you can manipulate search engine optimization by various postings and blogs, and you can hire VCs overseas to run a bunch of nonsense about you, but it's not the best way. What's the best way? Word of mouth. The success of your business can be found in the number of people talking about your business. So how many are talking about your business? It's really difficult to get people talking about your business when half of you, your families don't even know you're here, right? <laughs> Heaven forbid we tell them that. You went where? What, are you kidding? Those are all scams. That never works. So do you believe in your business? Do you have a vision for your business? Have you shared the vision with those around you? If we won't help you, who will? 
Charles Mann Handy said this, the companies that survive longest are the ones that work out of what they uniquely can give to the world. Not just growth or money, but their excellence, their respect for others, or their ability to make people happy. Some call those things a soul. That's deep. So let's pause here for a moment. Why are you getting into this business? Okay, if it is to make money, you're going to have limited success. Sorry, that's the reality. If you're in this to make money, you're going to have limited success. I, I don't deny that you'll be successful. I'm just saying it's limited. Because nobody can get behind that vision. Nobody can get behind the vision. Let's all get stinking, filthy rich. Like Henry Ford said, I've been rich, I've been poor. I prefer rich, right? But it's not really a vision people can get behind. So why are you in this? Help other people. It's people business. If you leave here with that goal in mind and only that goal, you're going to get filthy, stinking rich. But if you're doing it for the money, you're going to get burned out. You're going to get disgruntled. You're going to get upset. You're going to have anxiety because nothing's going as quickly as you'd like it to go. Leave here with the plan and the intention of helping other people. As our old pastor in Salt Lake City used to say, I'm simply one beggar sharing with another beggar where I found bread. I like that. Secured Investment Corp. was built for the people, by the people, us the people. We, both our clients, you and our employees, have built a symbiotic company that generates wealth only by helping others generate wealth. Do you guys realize we only make money when a transaction is, sex is successfully funded? Which means the marketing has been done, the application has been submitted, the underwriting has been performed... The lender has been identified and established, the docs have been drawn, the wires have been sent, and the deal is closed. Only then is money distributed to us, only then is interest distributed to the lender, and only then are funds provided for the borrower. Who loses here? Who wins? Everybody. Can you get behind that? We view our company as a helpmate, mentor, consultant, advisor, and encourager with a heartfelt and tangible goal to help our clients become our equal. Think about that. Now, some of you have been watching the speakers up here on stage all weekend thinking, I want to do that when I grow up. Others of you have said, I want to be as successful as that, but please don't pass me the microphone. Right? <laughs> and that's okay. But guys, for us to succeed, we need you to succeed. And we don't want you to be looking up to us for counsel. We want to be going straight across, having open communication about the future and the success, the success and the growth of this business. We're simply raising you up to where we are. And in doing so, do you realize that you will raise us up to where you are? Because every person in this room is uniquely qualified at something. Every single one of you can do multiple things better than I ever could. Which is why it can't be about me. It can't be about just our internal staff. It has to include all of us, universally. John, you've got talents that I ever knew you had. And I want to know what those are. Just not right now. <laughs> our dream is for you to engage with our vision, our mission, our passion and our spirit, and become a customer, a client, a friend, and an evangelist of what we, you and me, are collectively building. What's our vision? Let's read it out loud. Our dream, our dream. is for you to engage with our vision. Keep going. Who's in? You don't need to race to the back of the room. You don't need to spend money. You just need to help us grow this thing by taking it to the streets, telling everybody you know, bringing them in, and sharing the vision. Can you do that? 
How do we do this? We do it through the circle of wealth. Step one is relevant and usable real estate education. Relevant and usable, not some garbage that was regurgitated from a seminar that was put on back in 1998. Those things don't work anymore. This market has changed, hasn't it? That stuff don't work. It needs to be relevant and usable, which is where your guys' feedback to us is everything. Those evaluation forms that you filled out yesterday will be used and poured over. And all of your suggestions, if we feel they are beneficial to the common good, will be implemented. Because you are our company. Step two, unlimited funds for your real estate investments. Unlimited fund for your real estate investments. Not every Tom, Dick, and Harry that lands on our website. You and you alone. And the only way we will grow beyond you is if you can't borrow as much as we need to deploy. So I will challenge you this. Borrow more money than we can effectively raise. You accept the challenge? You accept the challenge? All right. And finally, step three, a platform to build wealth by helping others. So you will borrow and you will take as much as you need from this company to get yourself to a place of equal. And then you will do what? You will end. Now, if you didn't have a vision coming in, or you better have one when you leave. And when you leave here, you're going to help as many people as you can so you get stinking filthy rich so that you can come back and lend to those people. Five years from now, I want to see every single one of you in this room, either at that back table helping us run these seminars, or up here on this stage teaching and training this audience, or actively lending to the people that sit in this room. Because if you leave here in five years, you're in the exact same place than you are right now, please don't come back. (laughs) We are not here to entertain, all right? We are here to build up. And the cream will rise to the top. Are you cream? Yes. I debated that question because that's weird. (laughs) Steve Jobs said this, you've got to find what you love. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking. Don't settle. I made this bold statement yesterday. I said, this may not be for all of you, and that's okay. You don't have to get rich in real estate. You don't have to get rich as an affiliate. You don't have to get rich in private money. But you do need to find what you love. And when you do, you'll get rich, assuming your love is helping others in the process. So how do you tell this story? You create your passion statement by answering these questions. Now, for time constraints, I'm going to blow through them. So write them down. We're not going to take time to answer them here as a group. But here are your questions to develop your passion statement. What do you do? What do you do? What problems or challenges does your deliverable solve? See, business is all about solving other people's problems. In our world, we solve the problem of no financing. That's the problem we solve. Now, if you're an affiliate and you're going to work this business, only this business, then your vision is probably very similar to ours. If you're doing something else, the question you have to ask is, what problem do you solve? Now, Vic and Cindy, you guys owned an animal hospital for years. You solved the problems of sick animals. That's the problem you solve, and it's a great cause. Some of you are in other businesses. You have to ask the same question. Thirdly, how is your product or service different? Now, this is your commodity statement, okay? A commodity happens when you are offering the exact same thing as everybody else. So how is your product or service different? Because once you identify how yours is different, you're no longer a commodity. Because nobody else has what you have and nobody else can do what you can do. Do you believe that about your business? Yes. Why should anyone care? Why should anybody care about your business, your product, your service, or how you do it differently? Because we're helping them solve their problems. Okay. Okay. 
John says because we're helping them solve their problems, then they should care, right? Have a passion with purpose, a messianic zeal to make the world a better place makes all the difference. Donald Trump once remarked, if you don't have passion, you have no energy. And if you don't have energy, you have nothing. Hmm. If you don't have passion, you have no energy. And if you don't have energy, you have nothing. So how do you tell this story and turn your business into money? First, no. What am I really selling? Here's a hint, it's not the widget, but what the widget can do to improve the lives of your customers. What you're selling is the dream of a better life. Once you identify your true passion, share it with gusto. See, when you are sharing and improving the lives of other customers, you can't be compared to a competitor because they don't care like you care. They don't got what you got. So how do you tell the story and turn your business into money? Develop a personal, it's coming back, there we go. Develop a personal passion statement. In one sentence, tell your prospects why you are genuinely excited about working with them. Your passion statement will be remembered long after your company's mission statement is forgotten. And if you want to be an inspiring speaker, but you're not doing what you love, consider a change. Now, I have attempted to speak on other subjects, and I was not very good at it because I didn't have passion for it. And if I don't have passion for it, if I don't believe in it, I can't sell it. I can't even talk about it. So do you have alignment in your core with your future business plans? Because if it is outside of your comfort zone, I don't like comfort zone. If it's outside of your ethical, moral zone, that's a better way to put it, you're not going to do anything, okay? Must be in alignment with your belief system. After interviewing thousands of successful leaders, I can tell you that while it's possible to be financially successful in a job you hate, you will never be considered an inspiring communicator. Now, this is actually taken from the book um, Steve Jobs, Communication, what's the title, Sheree? Steve Jobs, Communication Excellence. Uh, Steve Jobs was considered one of the best speakers in the business because he was passionate about his products. That's what he said. Warren Buffett said this, We would rather achieve a return of X while associating with people who we strongly like and admire than realize 110% of X by exchanging these relationships for uninteresting or unpleasant ones. Now, this comes from a book I'm currently reading. I'm almost done with it. Uh, Warren Buffett's Letters to His Shareholders. If you have trouble sleeping at night, this might be a good one for you. (laughs) I find it fascinating because Warren Buffett not only communicates a bunch of facts and figures, he actually talks about the dynamics of his business. Do you know that Warren Buffett is in the exact same business as we are? He raises money from investors, and the investors that he is looking for are the ones who will buy into his vision and stay with him for years and years and years and years. And of all of the publicly traded companies that exist around the globe, Berkshire Hathaway has the longest standing investor base of private citizens than any other company in the world because of that statement right there. He's not interested in higher returns if it means dealing with lesser people. He'd rather have quality relationships and make a little less. And I like that. I'm on board with that. Again, I don't want to lend a dollar to a million people. I want to lend a million dollars to a few people. That means I need you guys fully engaged, fully absorbed, fully bought in, and borrowing. And then doing what? Lending. Are you a private money exchange affiliate, inner circle, investor, cash member, select lender, and or avid borrower investor? If you are not one of those things, you better be before you leave here. Because you cannot fully take advantage of what's being offered here until you at least engage. You can't join the race if you've got no fuel in your tank. Okay? 
So you need to put some fuel in your tank and get started at one of these. Limp in if you've got to, but get started somewhere. Many of you are getting involved in our diamond and platinum program, and I applaud you because I don't take that investment lightly. That's a lot of money. We know it is. $25,000 and $50,000 is all some people make an entire year. But we don't want your money. We simply want to give you the best quality education that we can so that we can ensure your success from now into eternity, or at least the near future. Eternity, you should have been here this morning for that. (laughs) We need you borrowing, 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 and then lending. So it's time to spread the good news. Are you bored with your vision? Remember, our dream is for you to engage with our vision, our mission, our passion, and our spirit. Notice this is inclusive, okay? This is ours. Everyone in here, all of you watching at home, this is ours. So don't make the mistake of saying, oh, I went to that company's thing. No, I went to my company's thing. This is our company. You guys believe that? A client, a friend, an evangelist of what we, meaning you and me, are collectively building. Now, when you tap in and get involved with our company, you're not just buying into a vision. You're buying into an entire support structure. we got 35 full-time employees that get up early every morning and stay late every night to be ready when you call. To answer your emails when you've got a concern. Are we the best at it? We're getting better. And we will continue to do that as we grow. But we need your help, guys. It's the bottom line. We need your help. In the words of Jerry Maguire, let us help you, Rod. Right? Help me help you, Rod. Yeah. Now, we talked a lot about teams. Here's the importance of teams. The talk that I just took you through really is the compilation of me just plunking down thoughts on a laptop while I was flying. And yesterday I started emailing them to Sheree, and Sheree put all that together in the time that she's been sitting in the back of the room. If it were up to me to develop that PowerPoint, you wouldn't have gotten a PowerPoint. I wouldn't have up here with a yellow pad going, what does that say? So thank you to Sheree. And because Sheree put the PowerPoint together, this slide makes a little more sense. (laughs) Thanks, Sarah.